Welcome back to Bina's Kitchen, episode two. Today is going to be all about rice and crispy tofu. I've made tofu schnitzels a couple of times on umami sami, and that seems to be the dish that gets the most requests for a uh, for a recipe. It's just difficult to explain how to do it, and obviously we've realized that video is the best way to do it, so hence, crispy tofu coming at you. What you are going to need for this is obviously, we're gonna make the rice first. I don't like to just boil rice and then it's, I mean, it's fine, but we're about flavor in this household. So you need like, this is a little, a broken cup, half a cup, one cup. So you need like that much. I'd say that's about three quarters of a cup. I don't have an onion at home, I forgot. So I'm gonna use a spring onion. It might, may or may not work, but we will find out. And then a, see I'm learning a pre, What's it called? Shelled garlic clove. So garlic. So to make the rice, I've also pre-made some veggie stock. Had I just put some really hot water in. Um, I'd be careful with you know store-bought veggie stock. There's so much salt in them. And this one's from Nude Foods in in Gardens or like or just off Harrington Street. And it's got very 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 low sodium. Um, also just helps you manage your own flavors because if your food's got too much sodium in it naturally or your stock then you're like oh, what am i doing and you don't actually know so what we're going to do is we have got we're going to make a little bit of a risotto style rice versus just you know adding and boiling um boiling rice normally and that's fine but it's not good enough so blah, blah. like i think i'm good with the first video, i'm gonna okay i've got a little pot here that i'm getting ready we're gonna pick this stuff up a little bit in there. I'll show you now what it looks like. Okay, so the pot. Can you see? Can you can you see? There we go. Tiny bit of olive oil. We're gonna fry these up a little bit first so that um, you get a little bit of caramelization on the spring onion and garlic before you start to try and you know add tomatoes. This is the way that I do it, don't ask questions. Okay, while that is frying, I can keep an eye on it. I'm gonna make the rice a green risotto because you need as much green as you can, um, in my opinion. Throw that over there, until we have I've pre-cut some baby spinach very finely and I've got little beans, uh, sorry, peas that are, these are the ones that didn't go into the wrap. And then I should put them up a bit. Okay, then for the tofu, this is the brand I use. Non-GMO tofu, plain. You wanna get, what's it called? Extra firm. Ooh, damn, okay. I opened it before, so that's why it's juicing all over the place. But extra firm, it's kind of, it's not panna cotta e, and um, the extra firm has got a little bit of a, a little bit of a give, um, not a give, a little bit of a, a firmness to it. Um, they do put a lot of water in it. Some people say you should, you know, squeeze the water out of the tofu. It doesn't really ever work for me, so I just leave it as it is. What I'm going to do is, you can see it's quite a big, it's a big chunk. Um, and I want all sort of things. I want tofu schnitzel fingers. So we're going to... Cut, cut, cut. Oh, chance of fingers. I'll probably go like that as well. And those are going to keep on the side. In the meantime, we're going to make our peanut butter sauce, which is really, really, really yummy. Okay, what you're going to need is some peanut butter. I use the Willies, no added salt and sugar. Again, control the stuff that you put in your food. Know what's going into your body. This is basically just basically net, net peanuts, you know? And it's much better for you. So, for two tablespoons, you'll soon realize that I do not like to measure stuff. I really go by. Um, Feel. Oh, there's the hair. Then I've got some Kikkoman less salt uh, soy sauce. I'm not, a, I'm not against salt, but these are just things that happen to have in my, when I get Kikkoman sauce on my shirt. Maybe that's like a tablespoon, I say. Then some real maple syrup. Not maple flavored syrup. Real maple syrup. Because it's so divine. Nice and sweet. So I put like maybe half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon in there. Um, and I don't have a whisk, so I use the end of the whisk machine. And it takes a little while, just Okay, eventually it's gonna become it gets quite thick so it's gonna look like and that's just obviously way too thick to do anything with so the trick that i've discovered is to put some hot water in i've got one of these hot water things that you have in the office so i don't have to always boil a kettle every time i need hot water yeah. okay when you're done the consistency is going to kind of be not liquidy, but it does have a little bit of a syrupy flavor to it, but it's not, um, I mean, if I lift it up with my finger, it kind of rips off. I'm going to do a good job. Okay, that's really nice. I'm going to get this aside. 
Oh, I'll just fill myself up and I can get it. So, I'm too happy about that. Open this washing machine to the pool. And then you just cover these delicious, delicious pieces of tofu in the bean. bean. And put them in the fridge. Okay, so the base for our risotto is finally there, as you can see. You gotta be very careful with garlic because it goes from a golden, beautiful brown to black very quickly. So what I'm going to do, we throw in the, we throw in the rice, top up. Get some sauces in there. Good. Body time. Turn the heat down a little bit. And now we're gonna add, like you would do to a normal risotto. Let it cook, add some more, let it cook, add some more. Keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. Keep an eye on it. But basically that's all I need to do with the rice. You'll see that when the, when the liquid gets to low, I little, put a little bit more in, put a little bit more in. Not too much because you can always add more, you can't remove. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes of ricing, watering, stirring the rice, watering, stirring the rice. And then when it's just, just, just al dente and like almost pretty cooked, I turn the heat off and throw in the, the piece in the spinach. And then you get that sort of thing. So now it's just kind of steaming. You don't need to cook. I mean, the, the spinach doesn't really need to cook, but the residual heat will cook it quite easily. Now we're going to make these thistles. And just put that like that. Get the little fresh. These have been sitting nicely in their beds for, I'd say now 40 minutes, which is just, it's perfect. You're going to need one of um, these little tongs and then you use your rock hard F45 abs. Open it up. I like to use Japanese crumbs that just seem to be, you know, a little bit stronger. Panko crumbs are pretty expensive, but I found these otoji, ot otoji whipped crumbs. So you can really use whatever you want. Put them into here. A little bit a long way. And what we're going to do is start frying. A little bit of oil into your pan. You, this is quite oily meal. I mean, it's not really, it's not whole. It's healthy, but it's not, it's definitely not diet food. Um, it probably shouldn't be something that I'm doing in, you know, in leading up to bikini season. But that's not really good. Doesn't bother me. Oh, these are looking good. Okay. The fridge actually smells like pepper. Okay, like a lacquer. So, literally, what you're going to do, you've got one that's covered, put it into the crumbs. Don't do too many at a time because it can get a little overcrowded and then you like it. This doesn't work. So I'm going to do four at a time. But basically, the process is four at a time, cover it with the stuff and fry it. So, let's do one together and then do the rest. That's all right. Okay. that I got a new frying pan. So I've done them all, slowly turning one side, one side, one side, one side, taking them off the heat, and you've got that. Salt and pepper, because you obviously didn't add any, any seasoning into the, um, the peanut butter mix. Now it's time to plate up and see what we've, see what we've got. First step, there's a little bit of the rice that's been steaming, it's still obviously warm. I like to add rice in the middle of a bowl. I'll obviously show you what it looks like from the top just now. Probably like two, if you don't want to make it look like it's a portion for a giant. Okay, move that around, make it look a little, like it doesn't have to look perfect, but just nicely placed in the middle. Okay, little scaggly ones running away. Then we've got our schnitzels. I'm gonna choose the most beautiful ones to kind of just sit. Oh, this is smelling so good. We'll do maybe three or four, and then I know I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat the rest of them anyway, but four. The purpose of photography, let's do oh, let's do three little lacquer lacquer pieces. Um, need a little bit more colour, so I like a little few pieces of beetroot just for a bit of colour because um, you can never really go go wrong with beetroot and it's really it's really good for you. Not too much obviously, just like place them. Let's get one more because we're going in threes. So I'm like, oh, oh, a slippery bugger this one. Let's plate that like that, maybe across the thing. Love, love the sesame seeds. But I'm only going to pour them onto the schnitzels themselves. I should have done this. You can do this before when it's cooking so it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't fall off. And then let's do some black. I've got two bits. I love schnitz. I mean, I love sesame. Da -da 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 -da. Bing bada bing. A bit of a hob. Oh, I spilt everywhere. Um, salt. And then always a nice little bit of pepper. And there you have your plated tofu schnitzel risotto deliciousness with some yummy um, beetroot. That's it. Okay, bye.